What's up, Burn Nation? Welcome back to the Burn Bootcamp podcast. And this is a Thursday episode, Ask Devin Anything. You are here in my office. I'm so excited to spend some time with you all and just really unpack, you know, life. I, I think about I think about life in real really four categories as I'm trying to navigate four categories really stand out to me. Number one is relationships. So I'm going to talk to you guys about that today. We don't hadn't talked a lot about relationships on the podcast lately, but I think um, you know love obviously is a universal human need and what motivates all of us. The, the 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 pleasure or the pain that we gain in our life is motivated by a lack or an abundance of love, and and so we're going to talk about that. I think the second thing I really like talking about is money because you know personal finances make the world go round um money in general makes the world go round and it's an important part of our life that we master movement is the third thing mastering movement you know the way that we move our bodies is so important to our overall health and this has been really overlooked for such a long time it's like people have always said set your mind to it it's like, ah, I get it, but like set your body to it. Let's, let's, let's try that one and see how that works. Setting your body to it forces you to set your mind to it because your, your, your physiological nature and your chemical makeup is no different than your psychological makeup. And uh, the last thing is, is uh, emotions, mastering your emotions. So between emotions, and that's really your mindset, right? Your set of your mind, mastering your emotions, your mental toughness. Between mastering your emotions... Mastering your movements, your 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 money, and mastering love. These four areas of life are really what allow us to take ownership for ourselves, take responsibility for ourselves, and uh, each category goes really deep, right? If those were the four, let's call it major categories to life that really makes the world go round, makes you happy, makes you sad, then we need to really unpack each one of them. And I want to talk about relationships today because I um, I posted a a picture of Morgan and I a, a while ago and asked for some questions to fuel the show. And uh, it was really interesting just to see like when I, I, I kind of asked for questions in, in correlation with the picture of Morgan and I, I forget where we at. Let me look it up on Instagram. Which one was it? It was the most recent one where, oh, I don't know if you can see this. It's this one right here. This one, the caption was, uh, today's a great day. Why? Because I woke up every morning. I woke up this morning and everyone I love is healthy. Life is far too short to major in the minor things. We get one life, one at bat, and I just can't spend mine dwelling on little stuff. And I'm happy every day because my perspective allows me to be. I'm mesmerized by the fact that I can actually type this message and hit send and thousand pe- thousands of people are going to have a better day because of it. I think it's unreal. It's magical. And my wonder and amazement for life gives uh, it a... Uh, gives me a rare world view where judgments or bumps in the road don't affect me psychologically. And, it, you know, Morgan and I, we expect bruises. Uh, we failed and have failed many times. I've made millions and millions and millions of dollars of failures here at the Burn Bootcamp organization. And also, you know, 100x that in successes. And so we're not scared of failure. That was the whole embodiment of, of this message. I said, instead, we lead with love, connection, and empathy. Um, and in this life, in this at bat, Morgan and I, Burn Nation, and I are swinging for the fences. That was my caption. Again, just to show you the, the photo if you're watching on YouTube. That was the photo. And, you know, I got a bunch of questions on this when I reshared it on my story, just ar- around like what makes this mindset. The, the questions were like, Devin, I get it. And, you know, like I love your perspective. The mindset that you're bringing forward to this post, to your life, the things that I'm watching you do are hard. I'm try- I've been trying to do these things and I, and I can't do these things. And, you know, how does it, how does it work? Like, what's the, what's the nucleus? What's the center of it all? What makes your individual world go around? And it's one thing and one thing only, and that's the bond that I share with my wife. And so today we're going to talk about relationships, and I'm going to talk really, ladies, this one is more for your fellas. Uh, really, if I'm being honest with you, because I've made a lot of observations about myself that I'll use myself as an example. Yeah, because it, you know, we've over over the years we've gotten closer and closer and closer, and then there'll be times where something happens and we push each other a little bit further apart temporarily, and then we get over ourselves, or I get over myself is usually the that's usually the the key, and then we 
become closer and closer and closer and it's just this ebb and flow of 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 acting out what a relationship is in the real world especially one that has so much writing on it you know thousands hundreds of thousands of people every day show up to burn boot camp wanting morgan and and i to continue you know our relationship so that the business can continue doing what it's doing for them which is changing their lives and this it just doesn't happen if you don't take care of that relationship. So Morgan and I's love for each other really is the um, it's the foundation of of the love that people have for Burn Boot Camp, and we know that. And I take it really seriously. And so what I wanted to talk about today in Ask Devin Anything was just that, like the relationship uh, that I have with Morgan and how we've grown closer together. It's not a it's not a uh, it's not linear. It doesn't mean it like every day, every week, every month, every year. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't always flow in like one same pace, one same direction. It does not exponentially getting better. It just goes, uh, it gets better. It gets worse, gets better, gets worse. It just happens to get better more times than it's getting worse. And that's because of, I think really the philosophy that I'm about to share. And this is not taking anything away from Morgan in, in what she does. Or this is only just talking about the guy side of the relationship, the husband side, and what we need to really start doing, fellas, in order to treat our ladies better and and to really be that man uh, in your life that you've always wanted to be. And so I got a piece of advice that I gave myself that I still give myself that I'm not 100% at, but I'm getting better every day single day, every single interaction with my wife. And that is one thing and one thing only. I just need to stop having opinions. Like the more I have opinions, the less close we are, the the more distant we are. The more I think Morgan really like gives a crap about the answer to the question, what time do you want to land when we go back to Michigan? She's not asking me because she wants to hear my opinion, all right? <laughs> she, like, once you, un- fellas, once you understand that when your wife asks you, hey, what time do you want to land in Michigan? She's not asking you for your opinion. She's asking you to suggest back to her what she's already thinking. She's not interested in your opinion, your observation, what you want to do. She's interested in you being aligned with her, right? So the day that you understand this, the day you realize that your wife doesn't care what you say as long as you basically agree with her, okay? Like, and and I'm not, I'm not being funny or trying to like create banter. This is so true. And I'll tell you why. So if I'm going to, if I'm going to have a life where I'm serving everyone around me, where I'm serving myself, my family, my community, my business, whatever you're in charge of, you're all, you're, we're all in charge of something. We're leaders to our own lives first, and then we're charge of some, in charge of something else outside of ourselves. Do you ever look at yourself, fellas? as being in charge of your relationship. Like, you're the one that's in charge. Like, your opinions, your banter, your your pushback back and forth and arguments is the reason there's an argument in the first place. When we realize this, this is a also, uh, this is a realization and uh, an admittance of our ego in the moment. Um, I stopped trying to be right and started trying to do right Stop trying to win arguments and, and start trying to understand the feelings and the needs of, in this case, it's Morgan, my wife, my business partner, my, the mother to my children, my best friend. Like, all those things, all those four hats that she wears are sufficient motivation for me to be able to learn how to be a better communicator on behalf of that relationship. I mean, think about how many times... We just hear our, our spouse say something or ask a question and how many times that you just have a response that goes from thought to mouth right away, thought to mouth, boom, and it's out and it's in the world and you're like, ooh, maybe that wasn't the best way 
to respond. It's like, oh, what time do you want to land in, in Michigan? It's like, I don't know. What time? Well, I, I, I don't know. What time do you, would you like to land in Michigan? That's, that's, that's a great response. That's a question. You're responding with a question. If I'm like, Ugh, I just, you always bother me with the details. Like, can't you, just, can't you just make the decision? Like, it's your decision. Make the decision. I don't care. Right? What's a better response? Like, I don't know. I'm cool with whatever time that you were wanting to land. What time did you think that you wanted to land? You know, versus being annoyed by it, right? And so I think if we can step back and we can realize that most times your, your, your spouse is asking you a question, she's really just looking for connection with you. She's just really looking for a good interaction. What I've learned about Morgan is she craves just those good interactions. She just wants to ask me a question that maybe she doesn't know like how I'm feeling inside of my head in the moment, the exact moment when she asks a question. So she's coming, she's walking maybe let's say into the bedroom to ask me this question and you know, maybe uh, wanting to anticipate having a good banter, a good dialogue with one another to create a decision that can move our family forward. And because of whatever ego thing I have going on in my head, it's like I'm annoyed with the question. It's like I, I can't just simply have a, I can't just like slow down for two seconds and have a thought about that question that was just asked, what time do you want to land in Michigan? Like have, have a thought and then just have a filter or, or the yogis call it the great gap. Have the great gap between what you think and what you say and really take an audit of the words that are going to come out of your mouth before they ever even come out of your mouth because if you're trying to build a good relationship with your spouse, if you're trying to build a good relationship with the people in your life that you love, well then letting them feel heard is the, and, and listened to is a major part of that connection. And so if I'm seeking to understand the way she's feeling and the way that those feelings manifest themselves into meeting her needs or not meeting her needs, then I'm going to be coming from a place of empathy. If I'm, if I'm coming from a place of like selfishness, I'm going to snap back and, and, and kill the banter or kill the ability to connect just by the tonality that I answer the question with. Like, I don't care. Like, or I don't know. Like, you just hit that tone right away. There's an undertone of annoyance there, and it tends to push the person in your life further away. And they tend, not, they tend to come to you less and less and less over time with – with um, those moments of connection, right? Those moments of love. That, does she know that she can just make that decision on her own and she doesn't need to come and talk to me about it? Of course she does. But that, that's not going to meet her need for connection and love with me if she's got to make all of the family decisions on her own. She just wants me to say, hey, listen, babe, got you. Like, whatever time you want to land, I'm perfectly fine with that. Do you need help making that decision? Or would you like to make that decision on your own? And she made the decision on her own. And it wasn't about what time I wanted to land. She didn't ca actually care what time I wanted to land, fellas. Like, they don't care about your opinion. They care about your connection. And that's the fundamental breakthrough in my relationship has been not having opinions. Like, have less opinions. When you have less opinions, you have less ego. When you have less ego, you have more love. We have more love, you have more connection. We have more connection, you have more, you have more happiness, you have more progress. Like we just went to, uh, this weekend we went to, we did something fun. I don't know if you guys remember some podcasts uh, a, a while a, a while back and asked Devin anything. It was the beginning of the year, I think, Zay, where we were talking about personal life goals and I set that sheet up for everybody and I'm like, hey, there's six buckets in your life that you need to really focus on these six areas and one of those areas was uh, uh, family and friends or like, there, and there was an adventure, there's an adventure piece to this family and friends bucket that Morgan and I wanted to hit this year and so... And that manifested in, in, in us going to a uh, a concert in Friday on Friday in Cincinnati. We went up and saw our VP of our media company. Uh, shout out Mayor Bird for Bird Media Co. Um, up in Cincinnati and uh, saw one of my favorite artists, Cal Scrooby. And we just can we just had like a great night where we could go hang out with one another. We, yeah, I guess we were with our VP and talking work and everything. That's just who we are. But at the end of the day, it was connection with with Morgan and myself together. We got to spend a night in a hotel room without our kids, you know. And um, and in those those times, especially like those adventurous times when you've set out to go do something together, like how 
how shitty is it to go on this like trip with your spouse when you've been planning it and then bicker the whole time and like ban and like and like just get in each other's way, step on each other's toes, like have no congruency in the relationship. I don't know about all relationships. I just know about the one that I'm in and all, all bickering, all disagreement or disconnection starts with my opinion that I have that is, like I said, driven out of that ego. And so I've tried to really be conscious about stepping back and just not having any opinions uh, because I really don't think that our spouses want guys uh, um, want to hear our opinion. And, you know, Morgan will say the same thing, but we're both trying to be the best communicators in our relationship. And if you're trying to be the best communicator, your spouse is trying to be the best communicator, and both of you are eliminating opinions and judgments for the conversation, and you're talking about observations and feelings and needs, and you're making requests. Ladies, this one's for you. You're making requests that your partner – can actually take advantage of, like they can actually fulfill your request, that it's, that it's clear to them, they know what you want, they know what you're asking, that's your job, that's your part of the connection because it's almost an impossible ask for you to come to us with a question and say, hey, um, ask it out loud, right? Hey, what time do you want to land in Michigan? And then and then have the expectation or demand that we actually know what you want, that we can read your mind, and that we can telepathically just know that and then spit it back to you to he like give you an answer that you exactly want to hear, okay? That's an impossible request that you're making, and so that's not even a request at all because if I don't answer it or the spouse doesn't answer it the way you want to, then you treat them differently. That's called a demand when you – request something of somebody, you treat them differently based on not giving the answer that you wanted them to give you. That's not a request, that's a demand. So ladies, like, listen, that's, that's, that's a hard one. So the more that you can make requests, right, not demands, and the more that we can remove opinion and, and judgment and come from a lens of observation and connectivity, the more, the better that we're, the better our relationship is going to be overall. It's definitely a two-way mentorship, it's a, it's a, you're conspiring together, one another, to make each other better, to contend with one another. Um, the root word of, of uh, competition is conspire. And, and in Latin, and to conspire means almost to wrestle together, to put pressure on one another in a healthy way so that, you know, one person levels up their game, the next person levels up their game. The hardest part about a marriage, you guys, is this point right here it's like when one person starts to outgrow the other right and then there isn't a good because that will happen and there isn't a good connection between a good a good communication a good cadence a good conversation around hey babe I'm growing this way these are the visions that I'm wanting to talk about when we sit down for a dinner um, and then you know you're over here and you're in this place and you want to talk about people when we sit down for dinner, and I love you to death, but I need you to know that when I observe that we sit down and talk about people, I'm disengaged from the conversation. I, I look at that as maybe gossiping or talking about other people, and, and what I really want to do is I want to talk about visions, and I want to talk about ideas. And so that's just a generic example, and that happens all the time in relationships. That's not an example specific to Morgan and I necessarily. We, we, did, we went through that at one point, and we continue to one of us grows in one regard of our life that outpaces the other person. And then you know I might grow in mindset when she grows in her health, right? Like I think that's been a good contextual example for Morgan and I. I've spent two to three hours every single day of my waking adult life working on personal development, reading all the books. I read more books. I do more. I I, I learn more. Like I'm just I, I have a natural insatiable hunger. I'm not um, minimizing uh, Morgan's personal development or or the things that she does because she does she does that you know, 10 times more than the average human being too. I'm just radical with it, right? So there is a difference. I'm radical with it. I don't let anything get in the way of that personal development time for me. And I'm learning something new every day regardless. That's like number one on my pri priority list. And, um, you know, recently like, so, so like, okay, obviously if I'm waking up and I'm executing on that area of my life consistently 
and I'm doing it at a faster pace than Morgan or the other people around me. Now my um, knowledge uh, is up here, let's say, about a certain topic or a certain area of life, and, and hers hasn't caught up yet in that particular certain area of life. We've got to have great communication in order to say, hey, ba hey, listen, you know, I really want to sit down and, and talk about this you know, esoteric idea that I listened to last night. Like, can, can we banter about that? And having her be interested in that is the fight, right? So like explaining the needs that I have about connection with my spouse and then how she can um, help fulfill the, the requests that I'm making of her to help fulfill the, the need that I have would be maybe to, hey, you know, before we go to dinner tonight, hey, can you read this chapter in this book that I read? Like, I just really want to talk about it. And it would, I think, makes for such a great connection over dinner. If you could, if, if you read that, I really want to talk to you about it. And that's a great conversation to have rather than like, I, I'm out here developing myself daily and you don't do it as good as I do it. So it frustrates me. I'm I don't even want to go to dinner because I don't want to, I want to talk about the chapter in the book. You don't want to talk about it, right? What's a better way to communicate? And then flip that around. Right now, Morgan's going through this, uh, this journey where she's like dialing in. She's dialing in her, um, like her, her gut health and her hormonal health. And after three babies, right? Just she's, she's, and like stress from everything that we're doing together, like this empire that we're growing. She's, really honed in and focused in on that. And listen, that's, that's motivated me. Like my, my nutrition personally was better five years ago than it, than it is today. Both of us uh, up until recently, because of what, at least the way that we languaged it in our heads was like, Hey, we're going through this period. Like we're having these, we're having kids. They're five, seven, two. And, um, you know, we can set the, we can set like the radical nutrition, you know, we can set that down for a little while. We can be a little bit more lenient in our philosophy, right? And I've really taken advantage of that. And Morgan said, hey, no, that's not us. Uh, not anymore. We're done. I'm growing in this regard. And she went out and she grew on her own. And she went out and and started doing the, th the things you need to do. She started getting the tests, getting the scans, um, making the changes, eating the food hiring the consultant, like she was doing all the things, right? Like a lot of you do with burn. You show up every day, you put your, the trust uh, of, of your fitness into our trainer's hands and you're building a plan and, and you're inspiring your families by doing that. And so for me, I was really inspired by, by Morgan. So instead of what most people do, what most husbands will do when their wife starts to go on a kick, uh, this health kick is rather than acknowledging them for how proud we are and acknowledging them for the sacrifices that they're making and the leadership that they have in our family for um, regarding them for the leader that they are in, in our family for the actions that they're taking with their health. Like instead we like to say things like oftentimes I hear this like, Oh, you know, well, Oh, my wife's on this like health kick stuff. And like, you know, She's just like doing crazy stuff and going to this burn workout every day. I don't know, some gym for women. And uh, yeah, it's cool, but like I'm not doing any of that. Like it's like it's like where's my pizza? Like like can't even get a pizza in the house anymore. What we on you know, and you start to hear you start to hear these relationships where one side is resenting the other side for growing in their life. And why is that? It's is it out of ego? Is it out of is it out of fear that the other person is going to outpace you and you're going to lose love for that person or that person is going to lose love for you because of the new person they're becoming? What are we fearing? Change? Are we fearing, are we fearing, um, do we even know what our ego is? Do we know that's our ego talking? You know, it's like, what, fellas, listen, the worst thing you can do, the worst thing you can do is be around the boys and talk about your spouse in a negative light. It's the worst thing you can do. I was at a golf tournament, charity golf tournament, tournament and just hearing, hearing these guys banter about how ridiculous their wives are and their, how hard their rules are. And, you know, it's so sad to hear that guys are bonding over putting their spouses in a negative light. Oh, yeah, I came home late last night from like round one and she was bitching at me as soon as I walked in the door. 
Um, you know, I had I only had five beers. I only had five at the golf course yesterday, and she thought I was like wasted when I came home, and she was, you know, really unhappy with me. And it's like what? I'm not allowed to have fun. I, you know, I can't go out. I, you know, it's like, I, you can't tell me what to do. Get the fuck out of here. And you, and you hear, you hear this banter if you're in a group of guys as just regular conversation. And I just can't join that conversation, fellas. I can't do it. I'm, I'm not into it. I, I love, I, I know you, I know you have love for your wife, but are you showing it? Like, are you actually showing it? Like, you're using you're using your wife you're taking advantage of your spouse to build connections with other guys it's like if that's the only way that you can bond with the people that you're hanging around then you're hanging in the wrong room you're golfing with the wrong people and you need to get in a place where you can talk about ideas and goals and visions and stop talking about gossip and you know how miserable your life is and how bad it you know it is when you go home and so i just was thinking about this a lot because that actually happened to me and I didn't say anything in the moment. Maybe I should have. Maybe it wasn't my place. I tend not to give my advice unless people are asking for it. Hence, ask Devin anything. Because otherwise, you know, what are you telling something who can't be told nothing? Right? You're like, you, we all know the person. Can't tell me nothing. I don't, I, don't, I don't want that battle. I've got enough people that are here that want to grow, that want to develop, that want to take themselves to the next level, that I'm not trying to save anybody. I'm just here for those who need someone every day that can give them a perspective or share with them a mindset. Like, this is all just the DK mindset, right? I'm not, I'm not sharing with you anything that I um, don't believe in. And what I believe in wholeheartedly is that, you know, the man in the relationship is responsible for the communication in the relationship. I believe wholly that winning an argument is the worst strategy. I believe that having healthy, healthy arguments, healthy, um, contentious conversations about the things that you do and don't like about each other can come from a place of observation rather than judgment. I believe that if, guys, if we can just look through some of the thoughts, if we can look through some of the maybe acquisitions, because ladies, y'all aren't perfect, right? You're throwing out you're throwing out flames all the time, just like we are. But if we can take control of the communication and we can make sure that you know, those flames don't get fanned and grow into a house fire and that everything's burning down at, you know, 3 p.m. on a Sunday when it's supposed to be family time. Well, then our kids don't hear that. And then our kids don't have, then you don't have to answer the question, you know, why is mommy and daddy fighting? You guys are yelling at each other. Oh, guess what happens when you start to yell, right? What do they start to do when they're frustrated with something? They start to emulate you and yell as well. And I just have seen this in my house. Uh, you know, I grew up with a father who, and, and he had many women in his life who each one of them he was not faithful to, and each one of them he would um, physically abuse. And I just grew up in this household where my father took no responsibility for any of his words, any of his actions, any of his relationships. Everything was always their fault, pointing blame, you know, Never, never wanting, never, never hearing a request to connect, always hearing how he wasn't good, how he was doing the wrong things, how it was all on him. And, you know, I just realized how poisonous an ego is once an ego can control the way that you communicate with everybody, especially the people in your life that you love. And so to wrap up this thought, I think all of what I'm what I'm trying to say overall is that gentlemen you are responsible for the connection that you have in your relationship and your ability to guard that connection is the quality of your relationship the quality of your relationship is the quality of your life the quality of that connection in your relationship is the quality of connection that you're going to have with other people that you love in your life and you need to stand guard at the doorway of that relationship and ensure that you 
are the one who is controlling how we communicate. You are the one that's learning how to communicate and you take it as a personal responsibility to communicate in a way that is bringing you closer together, that is conspiring with your wife, that's conspiring with your partner to take the relationship as a whole to the next level, that you're not concerned about being right, that you're concerned about doing right. And through that lens, everybody else in your life sees that and people will emulate your actions. They'll watch what you do and emulate you rather than listen to what you do and then go repeat it. So the most important people watching us all the time are our three children and they're little parrots. And if I have a miscommunication, that all three of them are in their prime stage of development. What does prime stage mean? That's zero to eight years old, where you are the most impressed. This is where your personality is being formed. This is where your psychology, your psychological makeup is being formed. This is where you learn the foundational behaviors on how to act and how not to act. And those, especially for those parents going through those first eight years of your children's lives, what I'm talking about today is vital for their future, more vital than their school, more vital about what you do and you don't like teachers showing them or talking to them about more than what grandma says or does when they're with grandma, like your relationship with your wife or your husband or your partner and your children watching you, those are the most important eyeballs on your relationship. And so most of why I tell you that is because most of us, if not all of us, will do for others, will be motivated by others' needs much more than we're going to be motivated by our own needs. Like think about it. I use analogy all the time because I think it's an incredible one. There's YouTube videos where grandmothers are picking up Volvos to save their toddler's leg or foot from being stuck underneath it. An 80-year-old grandma, 70-year-old grandma picking up a car. You give that grandma two million bucks to pick the same car up, is it happening? Probably not. There's a different type of adrenaline, of motivation, of energy when you're doing something for somebody that you love. So the hardest thing to do in the world is to set aside an ego, is to take responsibility for the communication that you have in your relationship, your intimate relationship, and realize that if you have children, those children who are watching the intimate relationship are emulating and being psychologically embossed with every word, every action, every tone change, every dig, every swear word that you use, and it's shaping their future 10x more than any teacher they're ever going to have in their life. So this is what's on the line here, and Morgan and I are working at this constantly every day, and I want to share this with you today because it was on my mind, and oh, the when are we landing in Michigan thing happened literally this morning, and the first thought in my mind was like, I was literally in depth, like thinking about something else. And I, the first thought to my mind when she came in and I was actually in the shower and she asked me, hey, in a very like beautiful, nice, like loving way, just wanting to really be heard and have some connection. And she didn't want me to make the decision. She just wanted me to understand what she wanted to do and, 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 agree, and agree basically um, or give her a better way to think of maybe a better way to think about it if I didn't agree. But that was not that was not what happened in my head. What happened in my head was, why are you coming in here and ruining my private time? All I want is five minutes in the shower alone so I don't have to hear screaming kids and I just want to like sit here and meditate for five minutes and you're, all you're doing is asking me something. <laughs> and that went through my head. But is that going to create connection? No. No. So I applied the great gap. I heard the question. I let it sit in my head. And I didn't respond for five seconds. And I said, is there a particular time that you would feel best landing to make your day great? And she said, got it, 10-4, and walked out. Right? 
I connected because really what she wanted from me in that moment, she wanted me to say, hey, your needs are the most important here. My needs in this scenario um, are, are to make your needs come to fruition and your needs to come true. And that she walked out and we've had a great day and we've got kickstart. The whole day could have got derailed if I just said what was ever on my mind, right? Because that interaction is one she cares about more than all the other, other interactions combined throughout the day. And her admiration and love and respect for me has deteriorated at every time that I will pop back, say organically and authentically what's on my mind. Like being authentic is great, but only if it's leading to connection. Sometimes those thoughts that you have, like sometimes I don't want to get dressed. I don't want to get, sometimes I don't want to get dressed. I'd rather just wear pajamas and come in with a bedhead because that's just what I want to do. But authentically me, that's what I want to do. Is that the right thing to do? All right, if, if I don't, you know, it's probably not the right thing to do. Like, just to have pajamas on and come to work because I authentically want to do it. You don't authentically need to say or do everything you feel. It's not, authenticity isn't aligning your actions with every thought you have. Your authenticity is aligning your behaviors with the core values that you have. Let me say that again. Your, your authenticity is not aligning your thoughts, okay, the thoughts to the words it's aligning the behaviors to the core values. So you should not say everything that you think. In fact, you should say very little of what you think. And you should use the great gap. You should use that thought escrow account that you have in your head, that holding bank where you can hold and not respond and take five seconds to ask yourself the question inside of the great gap, how can this response make a deeper connection with the person that I'm talking to? And that's my word for today, guys. Thanks for being here on the Burn Bootcamp podcast. This is Ask Devin Anything. Just a little pitch and catch on one of the four major areas of life that I always talk about and hadn't talked about relationship in a while. And so uh, hopefully you like this one. Morgan's over here working the, uh, next door uh, through the other wall working, working uh, her CEO job right now. So I wonder how much of this she actually heard. And uh, I know I got, we got, I got DJ out here too. DJ's our brand manager. A lot of you guys know DJ. And as a couple of these things that I said, she's look, she looks in here. She's like, mm-hmm, that's right. You just preach. You preach. As if to say, you're not 100% DK on that one. I hear it sometimes too, and we're not. We're not 100%, but we try to be. We're striving for, uh, for perfection. Not necessarily always perfect. But pay attention to your communication, y'all. Thanks for being here. This is Ask Devin Anything, and uh, leave a review on Apple Podcasts. All right, we have, as of today, 120-something. I need more. I need more. We got to have more reviews. I want to know what you guys want to talk about. If you like Ask Devin Anything and you want me to cover a little bit more um, in depth, just go ahead and comment. Go ahead and, and leave a review. We love you guys. Two claps on two. One, two.